morning, everybody. Well, today we're going to move on to lesson number five um, on atomic structure. So today we're going to start with reminding ourselves what is the atomic number, what does that mean? And you can see on here that the definition is that it's the number of protons in an atom. It does also always equal the number of electrons in an atom. We're going to then move on to something called electron configuration. And we're going to show how that electron configuration can be used to predict where an element is in the periodic table. So the first thing to do is to look at uh, an element. An atom of an element here is argon. The circles show, hopefully you'll have seen back to the work on atomic structure, to remind yourself, well, what are those circles and what are these? So the circles themselves show the electron shells and then the particles, the subatomic particles in those electron shells are called electrons. Um, and this example of an argon atom shows us what the rules are for actually filling electron shells with electrons. Because we can see in this atom that in the first shell, in the inner shell, there are two electrons. Now, what that means is that the first shell can only take either one or two electrons, not more than that. The second shell, so we count from the inside going outwards, the second shell can take up to eight electrons, no more than eight. Can have less than eight, though. And then the third shell, just here again, the rule is that it can take up to eight electrons, no more than eight. So the way we write what's called the electron configuration for this atom is 2.8.8. And what that means is that there are two electrons in the first shell, eight in the next shell, and then eight in the outer shell. So the last shell is called the outer shell. And just to check we've got the right idea, this is a sodium atom. So again, the way we would write the electron configuration of this atom is two electrons in the first shell, eight electrons in the next shell, and then just one electron in the outer shell. So sodium in total has 11 electrons and they have to go into the shells in this particular way because that's what follows the rules. Only up to two electrons in the first shell, eight in the next, and then up to eight in the last one. Again, looking at a fluorine atom, so fluorine's got nine electrons in total, two electrons in the first shell, and that means if it's got nine in total, it has to have seven in its outer shell. And again, we write that as an electron configuration of 2.7. Okay, now looking back to the periodic table from the last lesson, what can we remember about this? So the periodic table, the modern one is ordered by Yep, atomic number. And then what do we call the columns? So the first column here, and they're called okay, groups. So this is group one, then this is group two. Remember, did this one have a group or not? No, these don't have a group, they're just called the transition metals. And then it carries on then with the group numbering three, four, five, six, seven, and then group zero. It's called group zero rather than eight. I'll explain that at a later time. The rows are called periods. So you can see in the first row, there's only two elements. And this first one is called period one. And actually, if an element is in period one, that means it just has one shell. The next one along, this next second row, is called period two. 
and all the elements in period two just have two shells. Period three just have three shells and it carries on like that. Period one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So if I was to look at an element, say for example, chlorine, this is in period three, group seven. Now don't forget to make notes on this as we're going along. Write those down into your exercise book because otherwise it's very difficult to remember this afterwards. Now, if an element um, has an electron configuration, that allows us then to see where it is in the periodic table. So, for example, the first one here, if an element has an electron configuration of 2.7, that means two electrons in the first shell, seven in the second shell. That means that the element has to have two shells and therefore it must be in period two. Next example down, the element has a configuration of 2, 8, 1, therefore it has to have three shells, therefore it has to be in period three. Same logic for the last example I've got on. So this one, it's got 2, 8, 8, 1, Two electrons in the first shell, eight in the second, eight in the third, one in the fourth. Therefore, it has to be in period four because it's got four shells. Now, not only can we tell the period from the electron configuration, we can also tell the group because when we look at the groups, any element that is in group one actually has one electron in its outer shell. Group two means two electrons in the outer shell. Remember these don't have a group. Group three, it's three electrons in the outer shell. Four, four electrons in the outer shell. Five, five electrons in the outer shell, it does carry on like that. This one here, group zero, means actually it has a full outer shell. And that's why it's called group zero. But for all the other groups, it tells you how many electrons, the group number tells you the, the number of electrons that element has in the outer shell. Therefore, I can use this, I can use the electron configuration to therefore know which group an element is in. Because if it has a configuration of 2.7, this is the outer shell. It means it has seven electrons in the outer shell, therefore it's in group seven. Electron configuration of 2.8.1 means one electron in the outer shell, therefore it has to be in group one. And my last example, again, this is the outer shell, the outer shell being the last shell. This has three electrons in the outer shell, therefore it's in group three. So what we're trying to do from the lesson today is to know the rules. How do the electrons go into the first four shells? Right the electron configurations for atoms, and then use that electron configuration to be able to say the group number and the period number. Okay, so if you can make notes on that lesson, and then have a go at the Google form.